Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. Find your seat and get comfy. Just settle right in. And yes, it is my husband's birthday, and I'm gonna tell them, babe, he's 40 years old. I should, I, I mean, he's 40 years young, and uh, he looks great. Seriously, uh, forever tanned, you would never know he's Canadian. Uh, uh, he holds, he holds a glow, and it's really annoying, uh, but he's amazing. And our family, if we have that cute picture, we can throw it up. Okay, so first came Caleb. Then came Judah, who's also in the house here on the front row, and give a little wave, babe, yep. First installment was Judah, then came Abby here, and then Finley on the bottom, and Rowan, uh, I'm holding her, and honestly, we were like, wow, we ended on a good note, so four and no more, and we're really, really grateful. And we love family, and uh, we love the house of God. Caleb and I launched uh, My Church, really simple name, can be confusing sometimes. You want to come to my church? Well, what's it called? It's called my church. What's, what's the name? Yeah, so, uh, but it's a name with ownership, and uh, we've been going uh, for 12 years now. Last Sunday, we celebrated 12 beautiful years, and uh, I've never been more in love with Jesus and his house. And I believe this message that I'm bringing this morning, it's a message that is, uh, is one that is only going to uh, highlight and underline what colonial church is all about. Uh, you already embody uh, the spirit and, uh, and the qualities that I'm going to be sharing this morning because the truth is this house, it's a house that has a sound of worship, a sound of praise about it. it your house makes a sound that cuts through uh, the night seasons for people. It cuts through darkness. It lifts the burden your house is a house of hope. It's a house of healing. Uh, just being in the environment, how many would say, just by being in the environment, planting our family in this good soil, uh, I have seen the fruit just naturally come out of my life. You're in good soil. This is, this is a beautiful house. Uh, you're part of something so extraordinary on the earth that I believe is not just impacting St. Augustine, but is impacting the surrounding area and the nation in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Amen, amen. So the title of my message this morning is He Brings the Balloons. And uh, yeah, I know, I mean, don't zoom in on any of those. It doesn't say made in China. I'm uh, not talking about those balloons, but uh, soon it will, it'll make sense. Okay, I'm not going there. I'm not going there this morning. Uh, but hey, do you want to zoom in? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, he brings the balloons. And I thought, how cool. I, I didn't plan this, but Caleb, you know, it's his, it's his birthday. But uh, I believe that we have a relationship uh, with Jesus who I know him to be the one who brings the party, the one who brings celebration about my life, the one who, though I walk through the fire, He's with me. There is an ability to tap into kingdom culture. Uh, no matter what season I'm walking through, I can have joy. I can have peace. I can have a life that is rooted in hope in Jesus' name. And so we serve a God uh, who is a God of joy and celebration. And so we ought to live lives that carry that kind of spirit. Uh, lives of celebration and joy, a house, colonial church that is known uh, uh, for the sound of celebration and joy. And so we're going to open up to 2 Samuel 6, uh, 14 to 23. A little context quickly is uh, David, King David. We all know him as the one who was in the field, uh, you know, overcame the lion and the bear and then goes on to overcome Goliath. Uh, we know him as uh, a worshiper. Uh, one who has written so much poetry uh, that I'm so thankful for because he is so real. He is so, uh, he's, wow, uh, I love it. He goes from like break their teeth to but, the, but Lord, I, I love you. And I, you know, I'm like, I relate to that, David. I relate to you. He's just, uh, he's, he's such a stunning example of a worshiper, 
of one who is generous in his adoration of his king. And now he is king uh, in the natural. He's a natural king. He stepped into his assignment and his time of, of appointing. And his first, one of his first uh, orders was to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. And this is significant. It's been in Philistine territory for a long time. And uh, they got to the point it was causing all kinds of trouble having uh, the very presence of God in their midst. Uh, there was a lot of drama that came with it because it actually didn't belong in that territory. It belonged uh, with the people of God, his chosen people. It belonged in Jerusalem. And so David was like, listen, we'll, we'll take that and uh, we'll bring that into this city. And so this is where we find David. This is an exciting moment. This is the very place, the Ark of the Covenant. This is where the presence of God resided. We now know today, wow, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the person of Jesus comes, makes himself at home within you and I. How incredible. But at this point, a thousand years before Jesus comes, it's, it exists in this Ark. And so David is excited. And what does he do? He's dancing before the Lord with great enthusiasm. I saw some of you this morning, you're dancing with great enthusiasm before the Lord in front of this ark. And David, what did he do? He threw off his kingly robes. He threw off his kingly robes and instead put on a, a priestly upper garment. So he actually wasn't naked before the Lord. I know some of us, you know, uh, that rumor had it, but he had a kingly robe on. David and all the house of Israel were uh, bringing the ark of the Lord to the city of David with shouts of joy. Come on, I want you to hear that. This was an acquired procession, uh, bringing the presence of God into the city of David. This was exuberant. This was generous of spirit, full of adoration of the king. Exuberant, shouts of praise with the sound of the trumpet. Come on. Uh, is that not the sound of the church? Is not, is that not our, our privilege and honor is to make a sound before the Lord? It's what we're doing here this morning. Come on. And David had this spirit. He's leaping. I love this. Leaping and dancing. I mean, I grew up in church. I was in the womb probably doing a Pentecostal dance. 100%. And David, I guess he's, he's the OG of this. He was found leaping and dancing before the Lord. But his wife, Mahal, okay, she is now the daughter of Saul, who we all know the hand of God lifted off of Saul before David was king. Why? The fear of man became bigger than his fear of God. And so the hand moved over to David, who feared the Lord above all. And here is the daughter of Saul looking over David as he's dancing, undignified before the people, throwing off his kingly robes. And now Mahal is looking over going, wow, did she take great pleasure in it? No, actually, the word of God says that she had contempt in her heart. She was offended by this display. They brought the ark of the Lord into the tent where it belonged. And what does David do first? He, he gives a, a burnt offering to the Lord in honor that the presence of God for the very first time is now residing in the city of David in Jerusalem. And then what does he go on to do? But he goes on to give cakes and dates and uh, raisin cakes and bless. he blesses the city. He blesses the people uh, with food and celebration. And then what does he do? He goes on to, to go home and bless his family. And we see the heart of David in this. And it was here he shares with uh, Mahal. She gives him a bit of attitude like, what are you stripping off? your kingly robes, uh, stripping off uh, your earthly authority. And you see the heart of David to go, I might be a king. I might be a king, but there is a king that stands above my kingship and reign. There is the king that is above every other king, every other kingdom, amen. The name above every other name. And he goes, listen, I'll become even more undignified than you saw today because he's worthy because he's worthy of it all, as we sang today. And then Mahal, because of this posture of her heart, instead of joining the cheering squad, she decided to have a critical spirit, uh, an offended spirit. It says that she went on to uh, have no child after this to the day of her death. 
And so let's pray. Holy Spirit, thank you that you're going to open up. God, open up our eyes to see uh, what it is that you have for us here today. God, thank you that uh, you're going to continue to move this house into making a sound, God, that is going to break through darkness, God, that's going to lift heavy burdens that people have been carrying. Thank you for the sound of this house. I pray that we would fine-tune this sound and that it would minister to a generation in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Well, a balloon bringer, we celebrated my dad's 70th birthday uh, this, this year, and I thought, hey, we're going to go on a budget. We didn't have any decor, but it was going to be full of people from his whole life. It was absolutely stunning. But I saw on a Facebook group uh, that somebody had uh, the Facebook group for our community. She said, listen, I had a celebration. We don't need these balloons. Would you, anybody need it? And so I put my hand up and I said, hey, it's me. Pick me. Uh, I would love that. And so I picked up the kids from school and I thought, oh, it's just going to be a couple balloons. And you can see it on the screen there. I thought, oh, it's just a few balloons. It's fine. We get there. I'm stuffing these balloons in the van. My kids are like stuck up against the glass. The balloons are pouring out the van. It's like a party bus. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I get it into our house and it fills the living room. And honestly, I stood back and I looked at these balloons and I thought, wow, the heart of Jesus was made so clear to me in that moment. He's like, listen, if you would live a life that creates space for celebration, for honor, for valuing uh, other, I'll bring the balloons. I'll provide the balloons because it's my heart. And so, hey, listen, we serve a God who's all about honor, all about celebration, all about pouring out your life one for another. And this is a value I know of this house. It's true of your house. Number one, I'm going to share three uh, values and and, values. really, truly, qualities of of being a balloon bringer, being the kind of of person who would go, hey, wherever I go, I'm going to bring the balloons. I'm going to bring the celebration. I'm going to place value on every single person I come into contact with. So number one, uh, they minister a sound of joy to the generation. They minister a sound of joy. You know, the truth is, in in the, uh, you know, early kind of pandemic. I mean, it wasn't early on. We had been, I guess, in a lockdown for months in Canada. Uh, That was our uh, circumstance. And I remember feeling the heaviness on the people. I remember uh, what we felt in the environment of our city and nation. And uh, God reminded me of a marching order that we received from a trusted voice in our lives, Uh, Steve Penny in, in Australia. Uh, who is very trusted in our world. And he said, listen, uh, this was just a few months before 2020 uh, hit the globe. He said, listen, a trauma is coming to the nations. A trauma is coming to Canada. And not to bring doom and gloom, but I want to let you know what your part is in all of this. Uh, This church, your house, and let me declare that over us here today, this house is going to be a prosperous church And this house is going to create a sound of celebration and joy uh, that is going to be in this house. I never want this house to lose the sound of joy, rejoicing, and laughter. It is one of your hallmarks. Colonial, I'd say it's one of your hallmarks. The sound of praise, the sound of worship. Come on, make sure you never lose that. It's a hallmark. And you know, I think of Mahal, I think of his wife, who was like, hey, David, that was a bit much. Uh, your your uh, dancing uh, before all of the people of the kingdom, like you're dancing in front of, you're acting like in some versions it says like the riffraff, like a commoner, throwing off your kingly robes, uh, uh, dancing. You, you, you looked ridiculous. And David came back to her and said, hey, listen, uh, he's, he's worthy of this. I'll actually... He didn't hold back the honor. No, no, no. He's like, I'll make it's the sound even louder. I'm going to uh, pour out my praise even greater. I'll become even more, come on, undignified than this. Uh, I love that about David because the truth is, do we not have a culture and a generation that is well acquainted with the sound of hopelessness? 
Do we not have a, a culture and a generation that is, knows the sound of depression and anxiety? Do we not have a generation that knows the sound of suicidal thoughts hitting every age and stage? We need a church. Come on, we need a church. And we need a people because what is the church? What is the body? It's life by life by life from the front to the back to the middle, all around the room. Life by life going, listen, I'm going to make a sound. I'm going to make a, a sound of praise that this generation needs to hear. Amen. Because it's a sound that will cut through the darkness. In Jesus' name and lift the burden. Amen. Number two. Oh, gosh, I'm going to keep moving. They honor, come on, balloon bringers. This is a quality about your life. They honor up, they honor down, they honor all around. You have a life that oozes, if I can say it in this way, you ooze honor everywhere you go. As we drove from Canada, gosh, with four children, oh, my gosh, pray for me. We have to do it again. Um, oh, Lay a hand. Uh, as we drove 20 hours uh, all the way here, worth it. Um, but as we did, the further south we went, uh, I, I started to get called ma'am everywhere we went. In, you know, grocery stores or, you know, at the uh, gas stations and the bathrooms, like, ma'am. And I thought, oh my gosh, am I getting older or am I getting honor? I, I, I don't know. But I liked how it felt. I was like, this feels really nice. Uh, there's something about this territory. We've been so impacted, haven't we? Everywhere we've gone. The honor culture about your nation. The honor culture about uh, your state and your city. It's absolutely beautiful. And, uh, you know, Jesus, he loves honor. He loves honor. And I would say he even understands if we look at when he visited his hometown, if we can pull up that scripture in uh, Matthew 13, 54, Jesus comes back uh, to his hometown. He makes a hometown visit. The Bachelor, anybody? Yes? So he makes a hometown visit. I don't watch it. <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes. Um, coming to his hometown <laughs> sucks you in. Uh, he began teaching the people in their synagogue. So he's amongst, I mean, family. I mean, I know, Pastor Jill, you grew up, you're amongst family. You're amongst friends you grew up with. Jesus was amongst his friends and family through all of the years. And what is the whisper in the room? Isn't this just the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother named Mary? And we all know the history there, you know, immaculately, you know, like, wow, what a miraculous conception, sure. Right? There's so much judgment uh, in his hometown. Uh, familiarity, I mean, family uh, comes from, you know, familiar. That's, this is family. This is the potential. And what does Jesus say? What, what happened here? He said, I can't really do a whole lot of miracles here uh, because of the dishonor. And so Jesus loves honor because where there is honor, it's an environment for miracles. Amen. Amen. This is why it's not just to make people feel all, all the warm and fuzzies and, and tear up and go, oh, that's so nice. Although, wow, that is the heart of God because he's a balloon bringer. He's all about celebration. But there's a weightiness to honor, isn't there? Because he knows an environment where honor exists, that's a place where miracles are going to break out in Jesus' name. And you see the heart uh, of David as he, you know, returns uh, to, uh, to the, or he brings the Ark of the Covenant and he places it in that tent and then he blesses and serves the people, uh, the Israelite people, and then he goes home to bless his family. What do you see? He's a man who honors God, he serves the people, and then he blesses his family. David was a man of great honor. And I believe he gives us a blueprint for how we ought to live our lives. I honor my king. I know who's king. I know who is the Lord of my life. I give him all honor. And then I live a life, one for another, a life poured out in service to the people around me. But I'm not so caught up in ministry that I forget my family. No, no, no. 
I go back and I go to my, and I bless my family. This is a beautiful way. Come on, I love how Pastor Maddie said there's a way. Come on, this is a beautiful way to live. And then David, what does he do? He tucks himself in at night, okay? He, he has that interaction with his wife that was unfavorable. What are you doing? You know, the judgment. Ooh, you missed my heart. You missed my heart. But then he, he tucks himself into bed because he holds himself. No, no, I'm going to continue to live a life poured out. Uh, whether I'm understood, misunderstood, judged, uh, no, no, I'm going to continue to live a life. And what does he do? He goes into bed and he goes, what more can I do to honor the Lord with my life? He looks around at his own house. Let's look at it. What, is, what does he say? Okay, so he goes into his home and he says, look, I am living in a palace made of cedar wood, but the ark of God is in a tent. You see the heart of, of David going, gosh, what am I doing? In, in a temple made of cedar, and the, the presence of God is in a tent. You see his heart going, I want to give so much more honor. He's due so much more. How can I pour my life out so much? How can I spend and be spent on behalf of the Lord and others? You see this beautiful heart. And then Nathan, who's a prophet, is leaning in here in the heart of David, and he goes away. And he gets a word of God for, for David saying, no, no, David, I, I see your pure heart. I see that you want to build a house and, and a temple for the presence of God. But listen to this. Uh, actually, it's going to uh, impact your family. Your family, your son, Solomon, is going to lean into your heart. And he's going to build a temple that would exceed uh, your wildest of dreams. And David, what does he say? He says, and now, O oh God... First Chronicles 17, in addition to everything else you speak of, giving your servant a lasting dynasty, like you're going to bless my family, you're going to bless my children. Some of you have raised children. You've seen your children's children raised in the house of God, and I'm sure you stand back in awe and go, wow, you're living the story of planted and, and flourishing on that wall out there, you go, no, I know that life. You've seen the favor of God uh, hit the generations. Well, David's going, oh gosh, you speak as though I'm someone very great, oh Lord. What more can I say to you about the way you have honored me? Do you see the heart of God? He's a, he's a God of honor, not just to receive, but he first gives that to us, right? How kind, how gracious. And then, very revealing, David goes, and you know what your servant is really like. He's going, you want to bless my family. You want to bless the generations coming after me. And you know, you know I'm as human as anybody. But you would bless the generations. Ah, oh, how beautiful. We serve a God who receives, yes, honor and praise from us. But gosh, did he not first extend it to us? Amen. Amen. It's why we're all here. The honor he gave to us when he died on a cross. Amen. And he gave us incredible grace and mercy. It's why we are here today. Number three, if the team wants to come on up, it'd be amazing. Another quality uh, of someone of celebration, someone who is known for bringing the celebration. Imagine a balloon in my hand. Everywhere you go, uh, people are left better. People are left championed. People are left with value placed upon them. Isn't that like Jesus, right? I mean, the crowds pressing in on him. This is without Twitter and Instagram and, and a trending location. And gosh, come and see. No, it was word of mouth. It was their experience with him. It was the fact that if you just grabbed the hem of his robe, you were left changed, transformed, healed, restored of, of a 12-year ailment. I mean, gosh, to be around Jesus. Fruitfulness. When, when you're a balloon bringer, a person of celebration, fruitfulness just follows your life. There is just a beautiful fruitfulness about you. Uh, if you look at the theme, yes, do we walk through seasons? Yes. Do we walk through pain? Oh, my goodness. I mean, we sing, there's another in the fire for a reason, because life happens, 
and you go through seasons and you might find yourself in seasons where you're walking through the fire. But, but what is the story? There's another in the fire standing next to me. Amen. Fruitfulness. Come on, provision, protection. This is, this is the story of the saints of God who have gone before and it's our story. Fruitfulness follows you. You know, when you look at uh, Mahal, let's just look at her example for a moment. Uh, as she chose a posture of critique versus join, joining the cheering squad, did she not have the choice? I think of that, I go, what were you doing looking down and, and over from the judgment seats? What were you doing up there? I mean, get, get in there. Get in on the, uh, it's like, gosh, it's so much better, right, being on the field versus in the stands. The victory, it tastes so much better. Uh, it, it's just so much better than choosing this posture. But unfortunately, she chose that posture. I have been in seasons guilty as charged uh, of taking that seat of, of judgment or critique or offense, uh, poorly uh, treated. I mean, we've all been there where we have chosen the seat of critique or, or offense over joining the party with David. And I would say, hey, this is a bit of a picture. She's the bride, right, uh, to David. And uh, here we see her choosing that posture. I would say, hey, Colonial Church, I pray that you would be found like David, right there in the presence of, of the king, right there in the mix of it, on the front uh, lines of it all, uh, praising, pouring out your adoration. I pray that you be found all in uh, when it comes to what God is doing in this house. I don't know if you know, but this isn't normal. <laughs> I've come all the way here from Canada to say what God is doing here is absolutely miraculous, stunning. And, and I, I, I sense the hearts, and I know the hearts of your pastors is just like David, where, oh, would you grant us the privilege as a family uh, to build a resting place where you feel at home and, and where who you are is honored and where people are esteemed and where lives are put back together. I mean, you find yourself, as I said, in good soil, and I pray that you would join the party, that you would be like David, just right there in the mix of it all. Uh, so much beauty, so much activity, so much fruitfulness is, is said of this house. Your house is known, not just here in St. Augustine, but the impact uh, is echoing across the globe. Uh, there's a reputation about your house. God is doing something so beautiful here, and I pray that you would just uh, hop on, hitch your ride. I promise you, if those of you who have yet to kind of lean in and listen, they didn't ask me to say this. This is, I'm just going, if I was here, oh man, I'd be hitching my ride, I'd be on the front foot, I'd be all in, amen. And, and see your life. There's a promise in scripture in Psalm 92 where it says, planted in the house of the Lord, and you will flourish. It says, even in their old age, they will bear much fruit. Amen. Amen. Come on, that is a promise. That is something you can lean your whole life into. It's not something you need to pray about. You just go, right. All right, very clear, very clear. This is how I ought to live. Uh, planted in the house of the Lord. And watch a fruitfulness uh, flow out of your life. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope that message inspired and encouraged you. Well, before we finish, I would just love to ask you one question. The question is this. Have you ever said yes to Jesus? I'm not talking about knowing of Him. See, that's education. I'm talking about knowing Him personally. That's a relationship. Friend, I wonder if you've ever said yes to Jesus, opened up the doors of your heart, surrendered ownership of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart, that Jesus is Lord, and we confess with our mouths that God raised Him from the dead, Romans says that we will be saved. I wonder if you've ever made that choice. I wonder if you've ever said yes to Him. I would love the honor and the privilege of leading you in a prayer right now, right where you're at, into a new life-giving relationship.
with Jesus Christ. It's as simple as praying this prayer. And if you're ready to make that choice, why don't you just pray this prayer right now with me? Say, Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. And thank you that you rose again so that I could have life. Forgive me of my sins, of all the things I've done wrong. I make a choice today to follow you, Jesus, to be a child of God for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. We are so excited. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. We believe you're on your way to heaven. But what we'd love to do is give you a free gift from our church. It's a New Believers Bible. And if you pray that prayer, we would love for you to reach out to us at colonialchurch.life and we will send you this free gift of a new Bible to you. We are so excited if you take this first step in your new journey of faith. God bless you, church. We'll see you next week. Thank you.